We know that interest rates are expected to rise this year. And with rising interest rates, financial stocks usually do well because financial companies do well with higher interest rates. And there are several financial stocks you can look at and you will see that most of them are kind of boring. They are not like growth stocks where you're going to invest and you can expect 20%, 25% returns a year. With financial stocks, you will have average market returns maybe. It depends also on the company you are investing in because I have invested in JP Morgan Chase for over six years and I have more than double my money. But there are other financial stocks, most of them you will see they are boring. They can be moving for years, but not by that much. But what if I told you that there is a growth financial stock? I'm not really talking about fintech. I'm talking about a bank itself, an investment bank. Actually, it's more than just an investment bank. It is a diversified conglomerate and they are growing like a growth stock. It is like a small baby Berkshire Hathaway. If you could invest in Berkshire Hathaway maybe 50 years ago, of course, it would have been a great idea but you would not have known what would have happened. Can we have such a company today where you invest in it after 50 years, you can make such great returns with God, the company is actually making good money. It is a financial conglomerate growing like a growth stock. And that company is B Riley Financial. And today I'm just going to call it Riley. Why is it called Riley? It's the name of the CEO and the founder of the company who is the brain behind the company and he currently owns 25% of the company. So this is one company with high insider ownership. Before we talk about Riley, the business itself, and whether it is a good investment or not, please make sure to smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. If you are new to the channel, my name is Ishraq. I am an elite popular investor on eToro with over 2 million US dollars in asset under management. So please subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you don't miss the coming videos. I was just giving you an example comparing Riley with Berkshire Hathaway. I'm not saying that Riley is the next Berkshire Hathaway. Don't say that I said that. I'm just comparing the two companies because there is a big difference between the two companies and that is the size. Berkshire Hathaway today has over 700 billion US dollars in asset under management. Look at the big banks. JP Morgan Chase has over 4 trillion US dollars in asset under management. But B Riley Financial has only 5 billion US dollars in asset under management. Of course, they can grow eventually these assets. And I believe that they can grow it at a rapid rate because they have been doing so, so far. So what exactly is this business? As I told you, it is a diversified financial conglomerate. They have an investment banking branch. For example, you have financial consulting, which is something done by investment banks. So what is financial consulting? You're doing a deal and you need advice on that deal. You go to an investment bank and you will see whenever we have IPOs, we have this happening in the market, they are advisors to these companies. For example, it can be Morgan Stanley, Goldman Sachs, JP Morgan, Deutsche Bank, Credit Suisse, all of these are advisors. So this is called financial consulting. Of course, they make money through fees. Another way that the company makes money is through capital markets. And this is pure investment banking. Here, I mean, they connect the buyers to the sellers. They also allow their clients to trade, of course, they have a private wealth management and they also have a division called auction and liquidation. So what is auction and liquidation? Let's say you have a business and you know that this business is not going to survive. You want to liquidate everything and sell everything. You need an investment bank in order to help you do that, in order for you to be able to sell your assets at the highest price. So the investment bank, they are going to buy the assets from you at a certain price, so you don't have to sell everything individually. Let's say you owned a, a private school. You don't have to sell every chair, every table one by one. You can sell everything to the investment bank and then they are going to auction everything eventually. And this is a dangerous business because you will see in 2019, this company, B. Riley, actually lost money, a lot of money because of one bad deal. There is always a risk investing in investment banks where there is one bad deal going very wrong and where they can lose a lot of money. And it happened with B. Riley in 2019. So they had this auction and liquidation deal. They already set a price, but, but they were unable eventually to sell at the price at which they bought. So they lost money on that deal. It's okay. It happens to banks to lose money. The fact that they were able to recover that this loss was not so big on them overall when we look at the overall company is something good in my opinion as an investment bank they also have analysts for example when you are listening to 
a conference call from a CEO, you will hear that there is an analyst asking question. The analyst is from Bank of America. So you see there are all these analysts hired by the banks to ask questions, to follow these companies and then sell their analysis to their clients. This is exactly what I do, but I'm an independent analyst. I don't work for any bank. So B Riley, they are focused on small cap companies. And you can see that they are among the leaders. Normally, you, the big banks, JP Morgan, Goldman Sachs, they are going to go after the big companies. They don't like to follow the small ones. The more company they are following, the more analysts they will have to hire. So they don't want to follow every company in America, only certain companies. But B Riley, they are following the smaller ones, so they have a niche there. Of course, there are competitors, for example, Jeffries, which is also very active in the small cap market, but uh, B Riley is gaining market share. In the last two years, the business of B Riley Financial did pretty well, really well actually. And the main reason was all, all the disruption happening in the market. The market was volatile, there was a sell off, and then people started buying again and everything went up. So we had a very fast bull market. Whenever there's trading, investment banks are going to make money. And also when they were, the market was crashing, you may say, okay, it was losing money. Actually, it was making money because of the liquidation an auction and liquidation business because of the bankruptcy business because one part of financial consulting is bankruptcy so when your company is going bankrupt you have an investment bank helping you through that process to sell your assets so they make money for all these fees that's why the last two years were great for this company but what about the future in the future some of the businesses will continue to do well but others the growth will decelerate for example for auction and liquidation i don't think the growth will be the same like we saw in 2020 2021 because these were exceptional years because of the pandemic of the recession now auction and liquidation it's still going to grow but not that fast we need to talk also about the risk with this business as i told you the ceo owns 25 percent of the company the insiders own a lot of shares in this company you may say it's good, and I agree it's good, but we have a risk, the key main risk. So the CEO is also the chief investment officer, so we have to rely on them to make good investments. It's just like investing in Berkshire TV. But what happens if uh, he gets hit by a bus? You lose everything. It's not really such a good idea to have a business depending on only one single person, like Berkshire TV or Tesla. Of course, you can always uh, see if this one person is really good at what he or she is doing, then maybe it may be a good investment. I'm not saying that Berkshire Hathaway has not been a good investment. Today, I'm not investing in the company because I have other alternatives, but it is a good investment for the long term. If I had invested in Berkshire Hathaway 50 years ago, it would have been maybe the best investment ever. And it was all betting on a single man, Warren Buffett. We have this CEO, Brad Riley. So far, he has proven himself. He's a good CEO. He's doing a great job. He's very smart. So maybe if you believe in him, you can invest in his company, knowing that he will lead the company to a better future and eventually you will be rewarded through your investments. This is the same thing like investing in Tesla because you believe in Elon Musk, investing in Berkshire Hathaway because you believe in Warren Buffett. There is nothing wrong actually investing in a company where only one man has uh, is making most of the decisions if that man is really smart but you have to be careful that one man sometimes it happens that they die or something wrong happens with that so be careful with that it is a risk yes but if you know how to manage the risk maybe it can be a good investment so what are other risks with this company i already mentioned that because of the auction and liquidation business now is not going to grow that fast anymore the revenue from that business part is not going to be that much compared to the past but still I believe it is going to grow. But there is another risk, the death that the company recently took. You will see that they made a lot of acquisitions in recent years related to their business, but also other acquisitions as sort of investments. So as I told you, it's like Berkshire Hathaway, they're making a lot of investments. But uh, let's talk about the acquisition they made, which is going to complement their business. For example, buying a competitor. This is something they did. But to buy competitors, to make these acquisitions, they have to take debt. And they took a lot of debt. So this is one of the risks with this company, the high debt. So far, they have been able to repay this debt. And they have done something very interesting. They have converted some of these debts, some of these notes, the bonds, into depository receipts. So it's like a sort of ADS, but it's not really called ADS. It's just called depository receipt. So they allow the bonds to be traded on the stock market. So the bonds are 
being backed by a custodian bank. So the custodian bank is going to buy the bonds and then convert these bonds into a sort of stock and being traded on the Nasdaq. You don't have to buy only Riley or ILY. You can also buy Riley P, which is the preferred shares, or ILYP. You have RI, LYG, RI, LYM. You have so many options in front of you. So if you don't want to invest in the stock itself, you can buy the preferred shares. It is very accessible and you can also buy the bonds. So there are different types of bonds. For example, if you're interested to buy the 7.25% bond, which is going to expire in 2027, which is going to mature in 2027, you can easily buy it on the Nasdaq. So when you buy the bonds, instead of buying the stocks, the volatilities are going to be lower on the bonds compared to the stock. And you look at those bonds today, the coupon rate and the yield to maturity are about the same. So they are trading at fair value, these bonds. So 7.25% or even 7%, you may say that's great returns in my opinion on bonds. So these bonds are also attractive. But are they really a good investment? Because according to Benjamin Graham in security analysis, he talked about this. He talked about senior securities and junior securities. If let's say company A is a very good company, company B is not such a good company. They have a lot of issues. Things are bad for them. Normally, people say that if you're investing in junior bonds, then it is riskier than investing in senior bonds. But if you invest in the junior bonds of A, because A is a stable company, it can be less risky than investing in the senior bonds of B, because B is a bad company. So it's not because a bond is junior to compare to a bond of another company that is more risky. It's all about comparing the companies. If there is a good company, whether the bonds are senior, junior, or whether you buy the stocks, whether you buy the preferred share, it doesn't matter. What matters are the fundamentals of the company. So whether you are going to invest in Riley, don't say that you're going to invest in the company because you want to invest in the bonds for less volatilities. You want security in the bonds. The bonds are only secure as long as the company is a good company with good fundamentals. But what about Riley? The company, in my opinion, you can have everything on my research partnership. If you're interested, you can have the one month free trial with everything or my research and even my investing course for beginners there. So you look at Riley, the numbers of Riley looks very great. We already mentioned that they are growing at a rapid rate. For example, the capital markets grew by 79% per year over the last five years. Here, we need to be careful about something. 79% per year doesn't mean it's just organic growth. They have been making acquisitions. But overall, the company's revenue grew by 61% per year over the last five years. And once again, we need to take into consideration that they acquired other companies. The book value of the, the tangible book value of the company itself grew by 46% per year over the last five years. And they have a good returns on equity of 71% on average. This is something you don't see with banks. And it's because of their diversified business. They are not just a simple bank. They are doing so many businesses. But that doesn't mean that this is good because as I told you in 2019, one bad deal caused them a lot of money. So if you're investing in the company, you should know that from time to time, maybe every 10 years, there is going to be one bad deal, which is going to make the company lose maybe a lot of money. But if they can manage this risk, then I believe it can be a good investment. So what do I mean by managing this risk? It means that even though maybe one bad deal, one deal can go bad, but they have cash. When this bad deal goes bad, they can continue to maintain the other businesses and recover. And this is something that they have been able to do. That's why I'm saying that this is a good company. But what about valuations? Today I look at Riley, for me, it is slightly overvalued. In recent days, the stock market has not been doing well, so maybe it is now undervalued, but uh, I'm not willing to invest. I need a bigger margin of safety. I hope eventually I can buy Riley. Will I buy the share, the stock, or the bonds, or the preferred shares? I prefer to buy the stocks because the returns on the stocks for me are potentially bigger compared to the bonds. But that doesn't mean I'm not willing to own the bonds. Maybe I'm willing to own the bonds instead of owning cash. This is a good alternative to cash in my opinion. But only buy the bonds if you really believe in the company. Don't buy the bonds just because you think that those bonds are an alternative to cash. Because 7% coupon rate, this is really good. And you look at the bonds, as I told you, they are fairly valued today. So you can invest and have that 7% coupon every year for the next five years. You can also buy the other bonds, but they are going to mature earlier. So it all depends on you. So what am I going to do? I'm going to put Riley on my watch list. 
for the time being, interesting company. I'm not going to invest in it because I need a bigger margin of safety. But eventually, maybe I can buy the company. About the bonds, they are fairly valued. Maybe I can buy the bonds as an alternative to cash. If you're on Itoro, unfortunately, Riley is not there yet. I have sent them a message of screen them to put it. Hopefully, they're going to put it. But if you can buy Riley somewhere else on another the broker, I think this is a company that you can have a look at. I'm not telling you to buy or not to buy. Have a look at it. It's an interesting company, in my opinion. So let me know in the comments what do you think about Riley. Thank you for watching this video. Please like, subscribe, and share. Please watch these two videos if you have missed them. Have a nice day and goodbye.